I don't want a crib in LA. I'm a dirty ass far rock nigga. I want to build my mansion right in the middle of the ghetto. So every morning when I wake up, I hop up out my bed. I look down and see how I know where the fuck I came. What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Paul Rowe What's the numbers I provided. Today we're back with another profile piece. This one is on Chinks Drugs. In this video, we're going to take a look at his early years growing up in Queens, New York. Then we will speak about Chinks' involvement with the legendary Rockaway Riot Squad, alongside Stag Bundles, Bino, and Call 2 gs After that, we will focus on Chinks' time spent in prison, where a lot would change for him before coming home and becoming a member of French Montana's Coke Boys. And lastly, we will highlight Chinks' solo career that was starting to take off before looking at the details surrounding the shooting that would end up taking his life. Lionel Pickens, better known as Chinks Drugs, is from the Edgemere Projects in Far Rockaway, Queens. Growing up there was rough, and Chinks would catch a few charges as a youth and spend some time in DFY. Once released, he would relocate to Amityville, Long Island, before returning back to Far Rockaway a few years later. By then, Chinks was already messing around with the music and was in the early stages of becoming a rapper. Next, he would link up with some other Far Rockaway rappers like Stack Bundles, Bino, and Call 2 Gs. Together, the group will form the Rockaway Riot Squad around 2003. They will hit the mixtape and DVD scene hard as they began working on creating a buzz for themselves. Stack Bundles will be the early standout of the group for his aggressive flow and witty punchlines. After releasing some music as a group and seeing the notoriety start to rise in New York City, Chinks will end up catching a new case in early 2005 and was sentenced to nearly five years in state prison. During this time, Stack Bundles will go on to work with DJ Clue and then Jim Jones' Bird Gang. Stack will keep Chinks' name alive by shouting him out in songs and interviews with the slogan, Free Drugs. Chinks couldn't wait to finish serving his time so he could rejoin Stack and Bino, who by this time were benefiting off Stack's buzz and making major moves in the industry. Stack was riding high off the success of Ballin', which was Jim Jones' biggest hit. It was rumored that Stack contributed some bars or the hook on that track. So with everybody checking for Stack, it looked like a major deal was on the way and Chinks would come home and be put right in position to continue pursuing his music career. But sadly, in June of 2007, Stack would be killed in the lobby of his building after returning to the projects after a night of party in New York City. And just like that, Chinks lost a childhood friend and a lot of the connections he had in the industry. In late 2008, Chinks would be released from prison and linked right back up with Rockaway Riot Squad member and childhood friend Bino. But now, Bino was getting ready to turn himself in to do some jail time and it was starting to feel like as a collective, they could never catch a break. Chinks, who knew former Bird Gang rapper Max B through Stack, would end up linking back up with Max or hoping to create some music and building his buzz up some more as Max was the hottest thing in the streets at the time. But unfortunately, once again, things just wouldn't go right, as now Max B, who was out on bail for a murder charge, would end up losing trial and be sentenced to 75 years in prison. At that point, Chinks was basically all alone in the music game with just him and his immediate circle to grind. He wouldn't give up though. Instead, he dropped his Hurry Up and Die mixtape series, started shooting some videos, along with getting interviews with different media outlets online. From there, his relationship with French Montana would start to grow. They had met while both were around Max B, and when Max went to jail, they just stood in contact with plans of working on music together in the future. And that's exactly what they did when in 2011, French and Chinks, along with some other rappers, started the Coke Boys. From that point, the mixtape started coming out back to back, and by the time Coke Boys 3 came out, the streets were ready for another Chinks Drug solo mixtape. Chinks, feeling his buzz getting bigger and bigger, would release Cocaine Riot 2 in July 2012, which featured the song I'm a Coke Boy on it. The song would blow up locally and start to spread. Chinks finally had himself a club banger that he could hit the road and perform night after night. From there, it was just more promotion, more shows, and more mixtapes to widen his fan base and continue on the journey to take his career to the next level, all with the hopes of eventually dropping a major labor back debut album. In February 2014, Chinks would drop the video for Feelings. The song was becoming one of his biggest records and once the visual came out for the record, it really took it to the next level. After a few more mixtapes, Chinks finally had that energy and mainstream buzz behind him to announce that he would finally be dropping his debut album title, Welcome to JFK, in June of 2015. The album would come out and get met with good reviews, but sadly, Chinks wasn't even here to receive them because on the morning of May 17th, just about two weeks before his album was set to drop, Chinks would be shot and killed while he drove him and a friend down Queens Boulevard in his Porsche Panamera. Once again, just like his far rockaway rhyme partner before him, Stack Bundles, 
Chinks would be gunned down in Queens right when it looked like he was destined for bigger things in the music industry. For the first couple of years, the case was quiet, with not too much information coming out. Then in December of 2017, two men were arrested for Chinks murder, and finally, some light was shined on the reason behind the slaying. The two men arrested were Quincy Homeray and Jamal Hill, both from Long Island, and according to detectives, Quincy, who allegedly was a shooter, had a grudge with Chinks dating back to 2009 when they fought each other on Rikers Island. The two wouldn't see each other till years later at a French Montana and Chinks drug show in Philadelphia. There, Chinks and Quincy were involved in another altercation, this time verbal, which ended in Quincy being blacklisted from the event. That's when Quincy, still upset about the fight on Rikers and now the argument at the concert, allegedly decided to seek out some revenge on Chinks. Less than one month later, Quincy and his friend Jamal Hill learned that Chinks would be performing at the Red Wolf Lounge in Brooklyn, thanks to a flyer that Chinks shared to his Instagram account to promote the event. The two followed Chinks after the show to a hookah bar and continued to tail him as he drove down Queens Boulevard. When Chinks pulled up to a red light at 84 Drive around 4 a.m., Quincy allegedly fired a 9mm handgun into the rapper's Porsche, striking and killing him, and wounding his friend, Coke Boy affiliate, Yem and Cheese. Quincy and Jamal are currently in jail serving time for unrelated charges, while the world waits for the outcome in the Chinks murder case. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. There's a quick profile piece on Chinks drugs, real name Lionel Pickens. As you know, Coke Boys, before the Coke Boys, Rockaway Riot Squad. You know what I'm saying? He was doing his thing, been around for a long time. Chinks was getting better. And actually, Chinks' album was alright. Like the one he dropped off on JFK, the album was alright. Had some good songs in there. Like if he was allowed to promote it, and you know what I'm saying, go on the promo run and go to different states and radio shows and things like that, probably would have did alright. I mean, he probably would have had a, another album and another album. You know what I'm saying? So definitely rest in peace to Chinks. You know what I'm saying? They got the two people that supposedly did the did that killed Chinks. So we got to see what happens in court if they get found guilty or not guilty. You know what I'm saying? Now. It's sad that him and Stag both got killed. They both were far rock away. They both started in the group together. They both got killed right before they was blowing up. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bino, the one who was actually taking the back seat to make sure that his dudes were shining. Even though some people be like, oh, they was better than Bino. It doesn't matter. Sometimes people be better than people still don't want to take the back seat. You know what I'm saying? He took the back seat twice to both his men, Stack and Chinks. And for it to get cut short before they could really blow up to where they want to blow up. So, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bino for just riding with us. That's really riding with somebody, dude, to thicker, thicker to the, to the wheels fall off. You understand what I'm saying? He like, I'm riding. It don't matter if we make it. Because he didn't make, neither one of them that they blow up to where they're supposed to blow up. But he stood by both his dogs, man. So shout out to Bino and rest in peace to Stacks and Chinks. Now, also, like I said, I got the members only. This is what we're doing with the members only. It's only one level now. I took the other two levels out. It's one, it's one tier for the members only. I got the members only. That's where the stocks is dropping. Now, if you want to check the Discord out, we was on AMC early before it blew up at like $10, 11 It's like $70, now $60. Something. We was on DoorCoin when it was in the cents, so $0.10, 12 cent. Now it's at $0.40, 50 cents, shooting up to a dollar. These are things that we was on before it happened. So we got the What's the Numbers Discord chat. Now, like I said, it's two ninety nine. dollars all my, I'm, I got, I'm putting videos up there. I'm putting the stock videos on my members only. At the end of the day, it's $2.99 a month. Y'all gonna make way more bread than $2.99 a month just off the plays that I, we made thousands of dollars on already. Like I said, man, it's What's the Numbers TV. It's your boy, Paul Rowe. This is a quick profile piece on Change Drugs. Go follow the Instagram. Um, we almost had like 600 followers over there. Subscribe to the channel. We have heading towards 46K. And it's What's the Numbers TV. Be back before you know it. We out of here. Peace.